Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sister Claire Festival in the 2024 edition. It's been eight years since the passing of our beloved Sister Claire Crockett. So today we're going to be celebrating God's work in her, right? Because we're not celebrating just Sister Claire. We're celebrating what God did in her um, with testimonies and songs and um, special guests. So I'm here. I'm Sister Anna Reardon. I'm here with Sister Grace Salau and Sister Kelly Pezzo. And we're here live from Jacksonville. Florida and in the United States of America, where Sister Claire herself served from 2006 to 2010. Um, so we're very excited to be here with you today. And we'd like to invite you also to um, write in the chat if you would like to where you're tuning in from. Um, so we can also pray for you and just see uh, what the Lord is doing through Sister Claire's life throughout the world. Um, before we get started, we'd like to pray um, glory be to the Father uh, to entrust this festival to Our Lady and to the Lord. And as Sister Claire always said, all for the glory of God. So we're going to say a prayer that all this can be for his glory. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so before we get started, um, I'd like Sister Kelly and Sister Grace, if they could just tell us a little bit about um, how they met Sister Claire. You, I'm sure you recognize them already from the All or Nothing documentary. Um, and so I'm sure you're all wondering, like, could they tell us more about how they first met Sister Claire and where they served with her? So Sister Kelly, could you start? Sure. Well, since we're here in Jacksonville, that um, is a great place to start because that's where I coincided with Sister Claire for the first time. I met her when I went to Spain in 2005 for the very first time. And then once I professed, the second community I came to was right here at Assumption Catholic Church and, and School. And she was here. So her last year here um, was my first year. So from 2009 to 2010, right before her perpetual vows. And then uh, I was sent to Spain and then I coincided with her for a time in our house that we have there in Belmonte. And then she went to Ecuador and then I followed her four months later. Uh, but we were, in, we were in separate communities. She was in Guayaquil and I was in Chone. And then a couple years later, she was uh, brought to Playa Prieta. And so I always say that Playa Prieta and Chone are like one community and two houses. So we did spend a lot of time together. Uh, and that's where, that's where we were last together. So we don't have pictures to show you, but you just have to imagine Sister <laughs> Kelly 15 years ago. So power to your imagination. Sister Grace, can you tell us your she relationship was, with Sister she Claire? She's the same. Yeah. She's the same, yes. Um, how did I meet Sister Claire? I think most of you have seen it on the documentary. I was there when she came to Spain for the first time. She thought she was going to party it up in Ibiza, Spain. But she ended up going to our Holy Week encounter in Priego, Cuenca. And it was that moment where she had the conversion on Good Friday. So I was present there, and as you can remember, I saw her uh, have that moment where she kept repeating, he loves me, he died for me, he loves me, he died for me. And um, from that moment, I was present there because I was a novice later on uh, during the year 2000. So the two years that I was a novice, Sister Claire soon entered as a candidate, so I saw her and lived in the same house where she was at, and then also... Um, I saw her during her first or her first year, I think, as a professed sister. And then we spent lots of summer camps together, like serving the youth, especially here in the United States and also in Spain. So we coincided. The last time I saw her was in Ecuador when we spent our last Christmas together. Yeah. So that's how I. That's awesome. So time. this is great because it's kind of right. like the two bookends. How about right. you? Yeah, oh, I, that's Sister true. That's, well, I was getting excited, right? I was getting excited because I was thinking, well, we have the beginning of Sister Claire's religious life. We have the end of Sister Claire's uh, religious life on this earth, right? Um, because in the middle. In the middle. <laughs> and well, yes, I'm the monkey in the middle, I guess. So um, <laughs> better here I am. Um, and I met Sister Claire um, when she was a novice. So I first met the sisters when Sister Claire was a novice. And I spent a year with her in the novitiate together. We coincided a year in the novitiate. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just during the summers, yeah, when we would all come together uh, in Spain, we would come together from our different communities all over the world. And um, I had the privilege of spending some time with her when we would all come together in the summertime. So um, I have just a few uh, memories of Sister Claire, but um, I count it as a big blessing to be able to have shared part of my life with her. And while we're really excited because 
we have a special guest here today with us that I don't know if people knew that she was going to be on the show with us. Perhaps you did. But just in case you didn't, this is really exciting. We have with us today uh, Sister Kristen Gardner, Servant Sister of the Home of the Mother, who is actually the postulator for the cause of the advocation of Sister Claire Crockett. And she's joining us here live from Madrid. Hi, Sister Kristen. Hey, Sister Kristen. Hello. So thank you for joining us. Thank so, you for inviting me. It's a it's a joy to be here with you, connected online now. <laughs> I'm sure all of our viewers are dying to hear the burning question, right? We have this burning question. Where are we at? Where are we at with Sister Claire's uh, canonization process? Have we opened it? Can we call her servant of God? Uh, is there a miracle? What miracles are we waiting for? Um, just all of those questions, I think, are just kind of going around everyone's brains right now. Um, could you clarify that? And then anything you want to share about how you met Sister Claire too as well, obviously. Go ahead. I met Sister Claire in the year 2000, like Sister Grace. I was 14, she was 17. And then we were candidates together, novices together, and spent many moments of our lives as different sisters together. So um, so that's my a brief summary of my relationship with Sister Claire. And now as a postulator, we're working on the cause, the cause is not yet officially open, but there's many preliminary steps that have to be taken beforehand. So we're gathering all the historical documentation about her life. We're gathering all the documentation about the fame of holiness, which actually this morning I just presented um, 7,500 pages about her fame of holiness here in the Diocese of Alcalá de Henares. So things are moving forward slowly, but sure. Can you repeat that number? 7,500 pages of favors, requests, all different types of information related to the fame of holiness of Sister Claire. So. Wow, that is amazing. And I don't think, I don't know if people know also, if you want to throw that in there too, like how many uh, hits the All or Nothing documentary has, how many books, um, which actually Sister Kristen, in case not all of you know that, um, she actually did the post editing job on um, the All or Nothing documentary, and is the author of Alone with Christ Alone, um, the official biography about Sister Claire, which includes uh, things taken from her notebooks, her spiritual writings, um, and just kind of shares an in-depth look at her soul, for those of you who have not heard of it yet. Um, also, the brief biography of Sister Claire, All or Nothing, which is for young people, and also for our youngest uh, mm -hmm. devotees of Sister Claire, we have When I Was Little. Right, which is a compilation of stories that Sister Claire wrote for our magazine for children when she was there in Spain. Um, so yeah, anyway, so Sister Kristen, I'm sorry to interrupt, we just get really excited when we see you and we want to share all the news about you, right? So um, anyway, so just to, to make note of that, but go ahead, yeah, tell us um, anything you want to share about how the process is going, um, any, maybe like any graces that people have been attributing to Sister Claire that have um, called your attention or just what you think Sister Claire can offer, like what the Lord is doing through Sister Claire uh, for our church and for our world today, right? What is she doing? So we constantly receive emails and messages, which by the way, I encourage everyone watching, if you've received any grace or favor, even if it's just like a spiritual favor where you felt like after watching the documentary that, you know, it helps you to, you know, continue your fight for holiness and not to give up, you know, not to fall back into mediocrity. I mean, any little grace that you feel you received through Sister Claire, if you can write that and send it to us, um, it's a big help, you know, for the work on her process of beatification. And we constantly receive messages. I mean, there's, I, I, for me, the most beautiful messages are when someone tells me, you know, I've discovered my vocation. I, you know, after watching the documentary about Sister Claire, I, I, I realize that I have to take the step and give my life to God. Or, you know, there's lots of people who write as well and say how, um, you know, such a Claire's motto, all or nothing has encouraged them also to say, like, I have to give my all for God. I can't, you know, just kind of, you know, live half, you know, half in the world, half for God. I have to give everything for God. You know, there's lots of messages like that. There's also um, several, you know, um, you know, physical favors as well, which I can't call them miracles yet because you'd have to study that. You know, we have to study them and see, you know, if they're real miracles. In any case, there's sometimes miracles that, you know, you can't demonstrate scientifically, but that the person who received them is 100% positive that that was Sister Claire for sure. Because, I mean, maybe you can say, oh, um, the doctors have seen that I have a tumor, but they haven't seen it, whether it's benign or malignant yet. 
um, I'm praying to Sister Claire so that it's benign. And then it shows up that it's benign and you, the doctors say, oh, well, it's not a miracle. But you could personally feel that it really was a miracle, you know, that, that the mm-hmm. diagnostic changed thanks to your prayer. So there's things that can't be demonstrated, but that you personally on a personal level know that um, it was thanks to the prayers. Um, so, yeah. So any any favors received, we're very thankful for you writing them, um, sending them. And, and I have a question. Yes. Sister Kristen. What is it about the life of Sister Claire that is so attractive? Like, why is she, because we know that she wants to be a famous nun, but there's a lot of people that want to be famous, you know? But what is it, like, what do you attribute that to? Like, that fame? Why would Sister Claire, like, I don't, do you know what I'm trying to? Yeah, I, th- I think that it, the only answer to that is that, you know, when she was young, she said she wanted to be famous. And then after her death, you know, she throughout her life, she was so generous to God that God, after her death, wanted to kind of, you know, fill, fulfill that desire that she had had when she was young and make her famous. I mean, it's funny because, you know, her sister say, oh, when she was little, she used to say that she wanted her name to be like on a sticker that people would stick all over the place on their folders, on their notebooks. Um, you know, when she was little, she would say that as a joke, you know, well, not as a joke, that was her dream to be a famous actress. But, you know, that God now has, you know, there's stickers with her name on it, you know, all or nothing, Sister Claire, or her picture that people do indeed stick on notebooks. And, um, and we haven't made them uh, the sisters, but that you find that people do it. They're online and you can get them. And so I just kind of find it funny, you know, that God wanted to fulfill her desire. But I think it's just a sign of his love. You know, God is like that. You know, our Lord is like that. That um, when we give him our all, he He then returns in a hundredfold. You know, he gives us, he said that in the gospel that he'd repay a hundredfold our, our surrender to him. So that's what he did with Sister Claire. Yeah, you know, it was striking to me. A priest uh, once told us, you know, Sister Claire terrifies me. And I was like, what What does that mean? Right? The saints shouldn't be scary. Why would Sister Claire terrify you? Right? But what he wanted to get at was like Sister Claire's radicality and her way of living her religious life and just like her life as a Catholic, right? So coherent and so radical. It was like that had stirred up his conscience and was calling him on to more. But the way he said it was, Sister Claire terrifies me. And I just thought that was great. I mean, that's amazing. Anyway, so like, let's just ask that for that grace, right? Let's ask Sister Claire to terrify us um, in a good sense, right? To get us back on the path of radicality and um, true love for the Lord. And um, so when, one of the things that we were seeing here in the States, we were at the SEAT conference lately in um, St. Louis. That was in January, right, sisters? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that struck us, because we had a little booth there, right, um, with the Sister Claire books and everything, and just there was a constant flow of people coming up to say something to us, um, to say, like, oh, I'd like to the Sister Claire book, or I met Sister Claire this way, or Sister Claire changed my life. Um, and so they – are we still here? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so it's just, there's just a constant flow of people. We even had to like hide to, to be able to eat lunch because there's just like this constant flow of people going by the booth. And um, but one of the things that most struck us, like this constant denominator, was Sister Claire's way of renewing the consecrated life. Um, her special love of like predilection, I would call it. Would you say that, sisters? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of um love for uh the priests, the seminarians, and the consecrated life. And so um, we're actually very blessed today to have tuning in with us, Sister Kristen. We actually have one of the seminarians from the Archdiocese of St. Louis who uh, can offer us uh, like a firsthand account of what Sister Claire is doing in that sense to renew uh, the consecrated life here in the United States. So here he is with us. Um, Hi, Michael. I'm going to pass it off to Sister Grace, who first had contact with the seminarians there in St. Louis. Hi, Michael. Hello, sisters. Oh, good. You can hear us. Um, it's great to see you. Thank you for making time. I know that today uh, you're busy because your eighth grade class is going to have confirmation tonight. So we've been praying for them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our first contact, I think it was actually two other sisters that are now in Spain, but you met us at the pro-life march in Washington, D.C. And um, maybe you could just tell us briefly, too, uh, of your own experience, because you saw the documentary. Absolutely. Yeah. No, like you, we met in Washington D.C. in the midst of the sea of thousands of people. And so I certainly, yeah, I certainly believe that Providence was and and and, and bringing us together because just a few months prior, that was the first time I'd watched the documentary. Um, it was the fall of my third year of seminary uh, 
when I first watched the documentary, I was actually home on fall break. I was able to watch it with my parents. Um, and when I watched it on fall break, I was, I was speechless. You know, it had that, had that effect. I was, uh, I was terrified, as you said, sister <laughs> of, right. Like what I just, it just experienced, um, how inspired I was by sister Claire. Um, and so, yeah, I came back to seminary. I said, guys, you have to, you have to meet the sister. You have to meet sister Claire. Um, and so that's when I came back and started sharing with the guys at the seminary, uh, the all or nothing documentary. And yeah, similarly, the guys were very inspired. And then, so yeah, we were able to meet at the March for Life and that kind of began our, our, our line of contact um, of being able to continue to, yeah, to pray for one another and um, to receive different, um, yeah, ways in which Sister Claire was inspiring us, but also you all being able to share the life of Sister Claire with, with us, which was so helpful and uh, inspiring in our own vocation. Michael, could you share with us what you perceive is the virtue that Sister Claire would inspire in seminarians or priests? Um, because we are here constantly receiving correspondence. I know around the world, but here in Jacksonville, um, it's like random seminarians come knocking on our door because they want to come and see where Sister Claire lives or lived um, after, you know, after she died. But what is that virtue? that you think this sticks out uh, of Sister Claire for the seminarians or the priesthood? It's a great question. Um, and what sticks out to me first is, I think what Father Raphael points to in the midst of the documentary, right? And he said like, Sister Claire, right? She, she was magnanimous, right? She had a, a magnanimity about her, um, great soul that was desired to give everything. Um, and so in the midst of that, right? We can call it all kinds of things, I think, a totality. Uh, that radical that she had of just yeah wanting to give everything to jesus to want to please him um in that self-gift um, i think at least for myself and, and from what i share with the other men at our seminary and what i've had different conversations with other men is there's something about that totality uh, that i think for us men like just something it draws out something in our masculine heart of as we're seeking right ultimately this conformity to jesus to be another christ it's like we look at Sister Claire and we see the ways in which she met that conformity, right? She poured everything out with an incredible love. And I know for myself, it's like I saw that and I was like, wow, like I want that. And I know a lot of other guys too. And it's been a challenge to them. And again, I think that's why he used the word terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. It's like, wow, I got to step it up here. What about... Um with your work with the young people, I was just thinking like sister mentioned, you have the confirmations uh, tonight. So that's special too, that it's on the day sister Claire passed away, right? So we can entrust them in a special way to her. But um, what impact do you think sister Claire is having on the youth, on the youth that you work with or on youth in general? What have you seen? Yeah, yeah. And so I did the documentary with um, middle school religion this year at, at, at the parish. Um, and so I've shared the documentary today, I'm sharing a little bit as well um but i think what i found is I've, i even had them write a little bit of a reflection right and we've had conversations and discussions about the life of sister claire the thing that continues to stick out to me because i think it's being so bombarded and presented to them right now is just the reality that like right the world is trying to offer so much this kind of like false ideas or these false truths of like what will make me happy right money fame um you name it right um i'm seeing that the young people are being able to articulate like, wow, I'm inspired by the way that she was able to give everything up, right? Like, I want, I would love to be famous. I would love to be an actor or whatever it is, right? She had, that was going to give her money and everything, everything that she could imagine, right, in the eyes of the world. Right? But Sister Claire, right, in such a beautiful way, gave everything to God. And you look at this example of joy and peace, and she's hilarious, right? And like, the kids are like being able to laugh at her and um, they're like, wow, like, there's actually more here. Right, I can give myself to God and be happy. Um, that's what I'm finding, and it's it's amazing. Great. Also, I don't know if you remember, but when we were at Seek, you pointed out to us that the Totus Tuus missionaries had uh, Sister Claire integrated actually into their program or formation of their own missionaries. I don't know if you could share a little bit about how they use Sister Claire for training their missionaries. Yeah, well, I think right, Totus Tuus, right? This the, again, pointing back to this this. Um, reality of totality uh they claire who gave everything and these missionaries right are spending themselves over the summer you know week after week being with the young people um trying to give right i'm trying to give to you mary uh, totally 
And so they see, right? We see in Sister Claire's life that she just, she gave herself, right? We look at the example, I think, right? How, right? Maybe it's like at, at recent, oh, I want to take a, a step back and I want to, you know, take a drink of water and, and then get food, right? And I think we see that in documentary, right? Where Sister Claire, though, would actually go and then play with the kids, right? And so even when we feel like we don't have anything else to give, I would look at Sister Claire and she's like, yeah, you can. <laughs> you got more in you. And so I think, you know, being able to know some of these missionaries who are really being spent over the summer, they look to Sister Claire and they see the way of her generosity, right? Her fidelity to, um, right, to the youth particularly, uh, sharing Jesus in the Eucharist, sharing uh, yeah, the love of our Blessed Mother. And yeah, they've really taken her as, uh, as their own. And it's been beautiful to see uh, to continue to live out like Sister Claire. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for joining us. And uh, the time is coming upon us, so we're just going to have to uh, move on to our next guest. But we're so grateful for um, you taking time out of your day to connect all the way from St. Louis. And um, we will definitely pray for your students making their confirmation tonight. And I trust all of you too, Sister Claire. Thanks, Thanks. Michael. God Thank bless you. you. See you. See you. Um, next up, we'd like to welcome. Um, we'd like to welcome some people. <laughs> <laughs> that are actually locals. We're going to have our locals up next because here we are at Assumption Catholic School, as we mentioned earlier, and we actually have um, some of those little children who are no longer little children anymore who are here with us to share uh, how Sister Claire had such a big impact on their life. And so I'd like to invite uh, Matthew Schmidt, and um, you'll recognize him also from the documentary if you've seen All or Nothing. Uh, or Otoro Nara, you'll recognize Matthew Schmidt. And we have joining us um, via internet is Caitlin Dedick, and she's joining us. Hi, Caitlin. Thank you for oh, joining you. us. And she's there with baby Claire. And I bet you can guess why her baby's <laughs> name is Claire. And so she was also on the documentary, and she'll be telling us also um, just whatever her memories are of Sister Claire. So Sister Kelly was actually here, as uh, she said earlier, with Sister Claire. Uh, serving when um, Caitlin and Matthew were here too. So I just asked the, I'd like to ask Sister Kelly to um, ask them whatever comes to your mind. So yeah. um, I don't know who we'll start with, maybe with Caitlin so that the baby doesn't get fussy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, can you just tell us a little bit about what you remember most of Sister Claire, if you have any favorite memories of her when you were little and how, because when you're younger, you know, you have a way of perceiving things, but when you grow up and you, you know, mature, <laughs> I don't know if like your perception, your perception of Sister Claire has changed in any way um, and how like reflecting back on it, how it helps you not just like remembering it when you were little, but now as an adult and as a mother. Yeah, for me, um, having encountered her at a really young age, I think I was like six or seven when I first met her. And I just remember being so touched by her enthusiasm and love for our Lord, especially um, our Lord in the Eucharist and in adoration. Uh, and my parents tell me all the time that like I would come home like constantly uh, telling stories of Sister Claire or things that we were learning in class and was just so excited all the time um, about all of the things we were learning in religion. And it really touched my entire family, um, my sister included, Taylor. She was also you know very touched by Sister Claire. Um, and even now, as an adult, when I share my witness, you know, and share with people um, how I encountered the Lord and like have grown in my faith, I always start with Sister Claire and just the impact and the witness uh, that she was for me. <laughs> and I was touched so much so that we did name our daughter um, Claire after her um, to continue witnessing to people. And when people ask me, you know, like about Claire and naming her, I always, you know, make it a point to share about Sister Claire and just the deep impact she had on me and continues to have on me and our family. That's so beautiful. So can you tell us um, how you lived All Saints Day this year? <laughs> yeah, I actually have a picture right here. Um, we dressed Claire up <laughs> as Sister Claire um, in honor of All Saints Day. Um, obviously, as it was mentioned before, Sister Claire's not a canonized saint yet, but she was a very holy woman. So we dressed yes. Claire up and there she is with a little ukulele cross and <laughs> a makeshift habit so we've made out of bed sheets and different things that we had laying around um so yeah it was very special and fun <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much now we're going to go over to matthew 
And um, did you, have you watched the documentary recently? I haven't seen it recently, no, but okay. uh, I still get people who come up to me and say, oh, you were in that documentary, All, All or Nothing with Sister Claire. I'm like, yes, I was. <laughs> I was yeah. Now, do you have any favorite memories of Sister Claire and, and, and how any lessons that you learned as a young boy that you've kept with you throughout your, your life? Yeah, definitely. I, I think one vivid moment comes to mind when we were learning about receiving the Eucharist and she talked about how if you have mortal sin on your soul, you are not to receive, you know, and you have to avoid mortal sin like poison. And I still remember that vivid uh, language that she used like poison and it stuck with me till now. And I think it's so important, especially today when, you know, sin kind of gets cast aside to remember that those things really do, uh, you know, you really do have to go to confession before you go to Eucharist mm -hmm. if you have moral sins. So mm -hmm. That really uh, stuck with me after all these years. That's a, yeah, it's important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. a good lesson to have learned and stayed there. Any um, anecdotes that you can tell about her? Do you remember? Because how old were you when she was? I was in I was in second grade, so I was around seven years old, just mm -hmm. like I was with Caitlin in, in the, in, at Assumption, mm -hmm. and we received First Holy Communion together. I can remember um, going to receive communion and then getting a picture with Sister Claire afterwards. And I still have that picture. My mom and I look at it from time to time because it's just so beautiful to think that, you know, I'm here with probably a, a saint, <laughs> somebody who's in heaven now interceding for me. And I just remember, I remember so many, hearing so many stories from my former pastor, Father Fred, and others about how Sister Claire interceded in their lives. And uh, really recently, I've actually begun to uh, ask intercession for Sister Claire as well for different things in my life. If you receive any favors, don't forget, Sister I, Kristen. I won't, yeah. <laughs> All right, awesome. Yeah. I'm sure people love to see um, faces that were on the documentary. Um, at least Sister Anna, when she came here, right? Yes. From yes, in fact, the day I got here, I think I ran into Matthew and I, he was just moving some boxes. But I said, <laughs> are you Matthew Schmidt? Are you the one who's, who moves your finger and says, I remember how she would point your finger and say, you should never commit a mortal sin. I mean, it was just so exciting to me. And then I met the teachers and I met everyone here. And um, they were like celebrities to me, right? Because they were the people who had been with Sister Claire. They're probably second class relics, right? So, <laughs> yes. Anyway, so all of you who are looking for relics, just come on by at our house in Jacksonville, right? <laughs> come and visit us. So um, we're so grateful. Thank you, Matthew, for joining us. And um, next up, we have uh, some members of our faculty and staff. I don't know if we have the video that there's actually a video message that I think Sister Claire left them um, that we want to try and pull up and see if we can uh, put that on for you as they come up. So here they are, Ms. Fletcher, Ms. Nelms, and... Uh, okay, Sister Claire, where are we? Am I speaking in English? Yes, you are. We are in Choni City. Choni <laughs> is in the province of Manabi, Ecuador. Could you have a message for the teachers um, at Assumption? Yes, I do. What could you tell them? Especially there's teachers that you do remember. <laughs> Mrs. Yes. Kelly Nance. Yes, Mama Bear. How about Ann Fletcher? Ann Fletcher. And I hope one day you can come and visit me or I can I can go and visit you. You know, whatever you want. And I never received your invitation, so I never went back to see you again. I'm cooking, that's why I can't look at the camera the whole time. That's okay. We don't want anything to burn. <laughs> Um, okay, sister, um, yes. there, I miss you all. I really all the do. teachers, like Wendy Nelms, you remember Yo, when? Wendy. Uh, Wendy Marianne Nelms. Jimenez, yeah, all these. Wendy had a little boy, didn't she? No, girl, Anna Grace. It was a girl? Oh, sorry, Wendy, that was a boy. No, she would, we would like her to have a little boy if God went once. Um. Oh, <laughs> is that it? Is that it? Perfect, okay. So, um, wow. Tear jerker, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that so special? Very sweet. Very sweet. Now that you've seen this, um, maybe you can share with us a little bit any favorite memory. I know because you guys are short on time because you are still teachers and you still have little ones waiting for you back in your classrooms. But if there's any um, yeah, memory that you have of Sister Claire in her teaching that has also, because the whole thing is that Sister Claire's example is so lasting, you know? So if there's anything that you learned from her, whether it's in the classroom or to you personally, because she really had a she had a, a sincere love and interest for every single person, especially for the faculty. And as you can see, she remembered you very, very well. Well, except for the whole baby, but that's okay. 
So if there's anything that you um, remember from Sister Claire that has also stayed with you during these years and that you cherish as a, as a beautiful memory. Or if you also remember the holy hours, because I do remember that we would have uh, holy hours here for all the faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. um, quite frequently, Father Fred, do you remember? <laughs> during your like work days or... I'll go first. I um, was impacted by Sister Claire as um, a teacher first because she taught with me um, for a while. And I mentioned the fact that her joy was really what I remember most. And I didn't want to say that today, but it's what's coming back to me again, because I think um, a lot of times the faith is presented really harsh and um, almost can push people away. And she had this joy about her that really drew people into the faith. And so she became my example so that now like teaching religion every day, I feel like it's really important that I show up with a smile on my face and joy, even when things are really difficult. And the greatest lesson that I received from her was that even in the most difficult moments of your life, you can rely on the Lord and still have joy and still go about doing like whatever it is that you have to do with joy and that brings people to christ and so i feel like that's one of the most important things the second thing that i wanted to share was just the impact that she had in my family and on my daughter katie who was also in that second grade class um and i know that katie rode around in the car with the mass card from her mass card it was like in the in the visor and um it was like she was always thinking of sister claire and we were asking for her intercession, like in the middle of all kinds of things that happened in the course of her life. And now um, today she sent a video teaching fifth grade and that they had watched the movie of Sister Claire. And what did those students receive from the Sister Claire movie? And so I think just the ripple effect of Sister Claire's love and her passion and just her true um, dedication to being Christ, the hands and feet of Christ in the world, is just everywhere. It's just exploding. And it was hard to know Sister Claire without allowing that example to be a part of who you are. And so now we get the opportunity, we have the responsibility to take what we received and like give it back with joy and love the way that she did so that other people want Christ. Um, and that's our responsibility now that now that we've known her. And, mm -hmm. and I know that she's performed so many miracles. I've asked for her intercession so many times, but it, it's like hard to prove it. But she's been watching after us here at Assumption and our families and our students that were here with her from the beginning. So, so thankful. She does. She has a special heart for Assumption, I'm sure. Mrs. Nance, would you like to? Um, I'm Mama Bear. Um, <laughs> Sister Claire gave that nickname. Sister, yeah. Sister Claire yeah. gave that nickname to me. Um, because when I first started at Assumption, I had two children. And then after I started at Assumption, I had my third and my fourth. And my third um, daughter, my third child is named Claire as well. Um, and Sister Claire would come into our, our second grade class and she always would have a smile on her face and she just spread the love of Jesus to the second graders. And my son was in the other second grade class and he became really good friends with Sister Claire. So there are very few kids that can say one of their very best friends in their whole life was a sister. Um, uh, so she would teach um, my class and then she would gather all of them for um, first communion preparation. And I can remember on their first communion day, you know, I mean, I had some, some rowdy, you know, the rowdy boys and right before they walked in they uh, like a hush came over them and they were absolutely humbled and they walked the entire way down the aisle um, with their head their heads you know just in you know just hanging down in just such a prayerful way um because she had told them you know any gifts that they receive are are from jesus and it wasn't it wasn't their day it was a day to to give thanks to god um I can remember Sister Claire left a video um, for my son, Jake, who's now 23. And the sisters, can't, they had us come over one, one night after, uh, after the five o'clock mass. And uh, they had Sister um, Claire's videos for Jake to listen to. And it's, um, they said, okay, uh, Sister Claire, do you have a message for Jake Nance? And you know, Jake's all waiting for it. And Sister Claire said, hi, Jake Nance, I have a message for you, my best friend. And it cut off. So Jake and I have talked through the years of what this message was. And I said, Jake, your message is your life given back in honor of Sister Claire's life and the love of God. So we talk about that all the time. And that, that is his, 
that was the message. I think it cut off on purpose. So now he has to go out and uh, live his life in, in, in a way that, that Sister Claire would be proud of him. Yeah. So uh, yes, they would go over, the, the teacher's kids started going over with Sister Claire for adoration mm -hmm. and for the Rosary Club, and then it just grew into what it is today. Thank you so much, Mrs. And Rosary Club continues strong. Thanks be to God. It's a tradition that has stuck, and we hope it always is around at Assumption. Mrs. Fletcher? All right, so I had the joy and pleasure of working with Sister Claire at Assumption. Um, she was a very inspiring teacher when she would come into the classroom. She was always filled with so much joy um, for the class. She would teach them all the basics, too, though, the proper way to make their sign of the cross, the proper way to genuflect at Mass. So we learned a lot of basics from her. Um, she had this great idea to have a nativity play with first graders, and I thought that was kind of crazy at first when I heard it, but here it is how many years later, and we are still every December, that's like the best part of school is the nativity mass that Sister Claire wrote, and it's um, such an honor to, to put on that play every year. Um, Sister Claire also prepared my two children for First Communion, Julia, who's now twenty. Um, 22 and Jack, who was 24. Um, they both had the pleasure of knowing her and living their life. Um, they still go to mass, praise the Lord. Um, they're both in college and in their master's program. They still make time every Sunday for mass, which I'm such a happy mama about that. And, you know, Sister Claire, she would not um, have a problem coming up to you and say, Anne, how, how's, your, how, how's your prayer life going? Have you been to adoration lately? You look a little stressed. And I was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, and it would make me uncomfortable, but I think that's because she was right. And that's her job is to get me closer to Christ. So I'm like, you know, I do need to get over there. And every, you know, she stills in my voice, like, Anne, you need to get you need to get over to the chapel and and have some time with the Lord. So um she's a wonderful, wonderful person. And I hope that we all have been inspired to be better teachers because of her. I'm sure you have. And better Christians, better mothers, better Christians, better better daughters mothers. of God. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Thank you so much to our teachers from Assumption, the only school in the United States that can say that Sister Claire walked through these doors and, <laughs> and is taught in our same classroom. So it's a big, it's a big grace. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, we want to take advantage to go back to Sister Kristen. We have not forgotten about you, our postulator for the cause of Sister Claire Crockett. Um, for anyone who's joining in, actually, we're really excited because. Um, we've got people joining us. Our technicians are going to tell us now. Where are people joining us from, sisters? Can we uh, have a list of? This is really exciting, actually. If you haven't taken All a look at right. the chat yet, um, we have people from Croatia, Ireland, Holland, Scotland, United States, Brazil, South wow. Africa. I'm seeing some really Italian names popping up. I don't know if you're from Italy, but your your roots are probably Italian. Um, so this is really exciting. There's people from all over the world joining us. And um, we're just, we're here celebrating, if you just turn, tuned in, we're here celebrating the eighth anniversary of Sister Claire Crockett's passing. So we're celebrating what God has worked in her life um, on this earth and what she's doing um, since her death, right? So this is really exciting. We've talked to a few people who knew her while she was here and other people who met her after her, her passing. So this is very exciting. Um, Sister Kristen, so what has this meant to you uh, maybe personally, like what you can share with us, obviously, right? Um, what has it meant to you, uh, this work that has been entrusted to you of uh, compiling all these uh, attributed miracles or stories from people who have been impacted by Sister Claire's life? What has it uh, been for you? Like, how has it helped you? Or, um, yeah, has it surprised you? Has it made you laugh? Has it made you cry? Like, I think we want to know. Anything when you want to tell us, yeah. <laughs> so... Well, you know, since Sister Claire's death, she's she's gotten me quite busy. Um, you know, I, from the very beginning, like a few weeks after her death, I started working on the website, and we, you know, all of that was, you know, um, because we started receiving emails and favors. You know, people attributed miracles to her, and so like since we started receiving these emails, like, well, let's get a website up so people can find out more information about her, send us, you know, emails if they received a specific favor, you know, attribute a miracle to her. Um, so from the very beginning, I was busy with the website. Then a few months later, the the film, the documentary, um, and then the book. The book was the the um, the task that 
really almost made me cry because you know it's 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 great you need you need dedication to write a book um yes. Yes. but you know but you know our yes. lord helped me and i i felt very sister claire very close to me when i was writing the book you know there's um reading all her writings and um, you got to know a side of sister claire that i had never even imagined i'd have to say you know because you when I, at least as a candidate and a novice, you know, she, she could seem so superficial, but then when you read her, you know, the deep relationship that she had with the Lord, even so early on, you're like, oh my gosh, like, what was I doing at that time? You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even half, you know, as profound as she was at that time. So to see, you know, what was on her inside when we were living together was really, was really touching and um, it helped me as well in my own spiritual life. Um, well, just so you know, maybe you um, had your tears shed writing that book, but many people <laughs> have shed tears of conversion and just hearts have been touched through that book. We It comes to us so so often, um, people who have read the book and who reread it, who have it on their nightstand and constantly read it, um, who use it for prayer. Uh, they take it to the prayer with them. So I know um, it's reaping a lot of fruits, all those, uh, everything that was sown with tears, right? You're reap rejoicing now, so... <laughs> It's good news. It's all good news. Um, I don't know, Sister Kelly, what do you think we should ask Sister Kristen now that we have her here? You know, like we want to take full advantage that all our viewers are seeing like the postulator for the cause. I don't know if we have any questions either on the chat. On the too. chat? People have been writing in questions because sometimes we see the chat, sometimes we don't. Everything's going so quickly. There's even somebody from Jakarta who's tuning in now. There's people from England, uh, people from the United States, people uh writing different languages that i can't understand this is amazing very exciting so i don't know if there's any questions from our crowd before we go on actually i was um thinking back to uh, when we were talking with michael logman the seminarian uh, i was remembering that there were also several women religious that staffed yes. us when we were at seek yes. i think sister grace you've talked to many of them how sister claire was impacting their life yeah. Yes, I did. Um, earlier on this year, we went to the SEEK conference uh, that FOCUS uh, organizes every single year uh, from in the first week of January. And um, that was impressive because there were over 10,000 religious, I think, at the conference. Or maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm exaggerating yeah. there. Hold on. That was young people. 20,000 young people, but there were many, like thousands of people there and a lot of religious and as sister you were mentioning before we had to hide sometimes just to eat it was true but I have to say I met a Nashville Dominican sister Maura Sheen and um, in our conversation she recognized us because of sister Claire's documentary and she's read the book and um, so she was so happy to talk to us but she said that um, Sister Claire's life has impacted her and that she uses Sister Claire's book like daily for her prayer life, to nourish her prayer life. But she inspired me because um, she said that she uses the Nashville Dominicans, they, they're teachers. So she, she was teaching fourth and fifth grade. And she said that she uses, um, as part of her syllabus, she uses the movie of Sister Claire to show uh, her classes. And they watch the whole entire movie. And the young students, they get it and um it helps them and even their parents want to watch it but it helped her as a religious to be faithful to renew her spiritual life each and why every day you, why do you think that is sister grace because um i just i hear so many strange solutions right to to religious who are perhaps going through um some type of a crisis or um trying to re en encounter their identity right as a as a consecrated person either as a priest or a religious sister or brother, right? Um, why do you think that is that? Because it's not like everyone who who turns to Sister Claire uh, for help in that thinks, oh, I'm supposed to become a servant sister then, right? So I'm supposed to leave my order and I'm supposed to become a servant sister. But it's that they're renewed in their own spirituality and their own vocation, their own charism. Um, what do you think, what's the secret behind that? Well, secret, I know that Sister Claire, <laughs> um, she had a very, very strong uh, prayer life. I don't know if Sister Kristen wants to add anything, but that was fundamental. And the talks that I would um, be present at where she would talk to young people, she talked about radicality, what you were talking about in the beginning, about not being mediocre and living and 
giving everything to the Lord with total generosity. In fact, maybe you read in the book uh, when sister, one of the sisters had asked her what her favorite Bible passage was. She immediately said uh, the one of the poor widow. And she said it's because she gave all that she had. And um, Sister Claire really didn't reserve anything. I've been present when she had those migraines. You have been as well. Um, and she really didn't stop just serving, giving of herself completely. And she wanted that identification with Jesus Christ uh, through the you know, womb of our Blessed Mother, her most virginal womb. And she asked our Blessed Mother every single day to help her. I think that was like, I, she says it in a video that the Blessed Mother, um, I would say secret, I think from all religious who have a strong devotion to the Blessed Mother, um, are on that road to holiness. But I don't know if Sister Kristen, do you want to add anything? Because you do know more. Yeah, you were the one who had to go through her notebooks and her personal writings, right? You had like a secret peek into her soul. So yeah. Wait, can we continue? So I'd say that I mean there's there's so much <laughs> maybe ask me like a yeah. specific question. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I just always say this whenever someone asks, like, what was your experience, right, when you heard that Sister Claire had passed away, right? And I just tell everyone the same thing, right? It's like as if we had hit an iceberg, right? So an iceberg, uh, you can see some of the iceberg on top of the water, right? For those of you who are iceberg experts, I don't know if I'm explaining this, right? But anyway, so what I've heard, right, is that you see the iceberg, a bit of it peeking out of the water, right? But what you don't know is that the iceberg the majority of it is under the water and you're gonna hit it before you know it. And it was like, when Sister Claire died, I felt like we hit an iceberg, right? And we discovered like what was under the water, right? We discovered like that that greatness of soul, that magnanimity that I think Michael was uh, pointing to earlier as well. And um, so I guess what Sister Grace is asking, what we're asking is like, um, what did you find, right? When you like scuba dove <laughs> into the water. Can I add right? something? Yeah, also, you, Sister yeah. Kristen, we, we all have the same founder, okay? Yes. And a lot of people always ask me, uh, Sister Claire, Sister Claire, we love Sister Claire. And we as servant sisters of the home of the mother, uh, we have a father, Raphael. And I'm very thankful for our founder because he uh, was able to, he was able to look beyond the superficiality of what it seemed superficial at that moment when Sister Claire had her conversion moment. And he really did believe that she was gonna come back and said she had the capacity uh, to be a saint. And he spoke strongly. He, he spoke to Sister Claire, and as he does to all of us, with a with a, a strength that comes from a, a father, our spiritual father. So I don't know if that helps at all. Yeah, I'd say that on one hand, it's it's almost as if, yes, at her, with her death, we hit an iceberg. Um, I think there were signs, you know, that she was fighting for holiness and that, you know, it, it's obvious, you know, you could, at least the last few times I was with her, but that wasn't right before her death. I mean, the last time I saw her was in 2013. We were at a summer camp together in 2012, but she was one of those sisters who would never complain about anything. You could ask her to do anything and she was right on it um, with creativity and, you know, very um, like totally open and finding solutions to any problem that there was. So I think there were signs that, you know, that she was, that you know, she was trying to live in what our Lord was asking her. But when she died, it's like our Lord, you know, revealed that iceberg that was under the water. And you know, and and it's in it's through all the graces and 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 favors that are being received, and we we see that. And then when I was writing the book, um, that's where I I I guess you could say I discovered the the depth of her relationship with our Lord, you know, that you, you couldn't, I mean, you could maybe imagine a little bit, you know, when you'd see her praying in front of the Eucharist or, but, but to see, you know, how, how much she loved him and how much she also struggled with her own defects and how much she wanted to overcome them, how much she was sorrowed to see that she didn't respond to our Lord as she wanted to. Um, that, that, that really touched me to see how she, because I think sometimes we can be sorry when we make a mistake because you see that you're not perfect, but she was really sorrowed by that because she saw that it offended our Lord and that's what painted her. So I think, I think, 
yeah, we're, we're discovering that little by little, you know, now the church with the cause, you know, the process of beatification will have to study and see, you know, if she really did live heroic virtues. And that's what a process of beatification is, you know, gather witnesses and, and, and study the life to see, you know, what's there. But, but how our Lord is permitting her to act and to work. Um, as we receive, you know, we see in all the emails, the comments, it's obvious that, you know, that he's letting her, you know, pour down flowers, shower down, shower down roses like St. Therese of Lisieux promised she would do. I mean, we're seeing that. So, so something's there. You know, so he has some kind of plan with Sister Claire. And I think actually leading up to our next guest, um, that's interesting what you said about her relationship with the Lord. I think one of the manifestations of her relationship with the Lord was her um, ability to write uh, poems or songs or compose. It was kind of an expression, right, Sister Kelly, of mm -hmm. her like interior life. I don't know if you want to share a bit about that. I mean, I do mention it in the documentary, how her way of singing, she would give everything. She would never hold anything back, even in something so simple as singing. And I know that sometimes she had a migraine, so I'm sure she was tired. And nevertheless, her, like the way that she sang was such a reflection of how she lived. She gave it all, all, all to the point of becoming um, Ronca. Mm. <laughs> horse? She, she was horse. horse. She was a horse. Um, and so um, that is that lesson. Honestly, it's like an allegory of her life, like how she lived. And it is still a life lesson for myself, honestly, like how she sang and how she lived. She gave it all, all, all until she was without a voice. So, yes. So, next up, we have joining us. Uh, one of our students, right, Sister Grace? Yes. One of your students here at Assumption. And what is she going to do for us? Well, I'm. her name is Melina, Melina Figueroa, and I'm asking her to join us today. I had Hi, to Melina. ask her to come out of class, so she's been very generous to do that. As soon as I asked her, she was so joyful um, and prompt uh, to come today because Melina, this is exciting. Um, actually... I'm so excited because I didn't know until two days ago that you are going to do something here at our Assumption Talent Show. And Melina is my third grade student, and she, um, you learned the last song on the movie, right, on the documentary uh, called Prefiero Paraíso, I Prefer Paradise. Mm -hmm. Can you just say really quick, why, why, why did you want to learn this song? Um. I wanted to learn this song because um, I really like it, yeah. and it's one of my favorite songs. What, was, what is it about Sister Claire that attracts you to her, to her life? Um, the way how she just left everything, be, like her, like how she wanted to become famous, she left that all behind to come to God and become a servant sister. Okay, so um, are you ready to to sing this song for the glory of God, mm -hmm. right? You know, this is, it was Sister Kelly that actually recorded, uh, did that last recording with Sister Claire before the earthquake. So, uh, but I'm not going to sing this time. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, you, why don't you scoot up so you can get closer to the mic? Okay. There you go. Okay. Right. I'm going to ask Sister Claire to help us. <laughs> Thank you. 
So what time is your, yeah, what time is your show? Um, the talent Thursday. show. He said he wants to name from Jackson wants to come. It's on Thursday. I don't know the time. Thursday afternoon. Six at p.m. Six. So if they're in Jacksonville, they can come. Of course. Try a little fee there, and they can come to the talent show here at the Jordan Hall. Mm -hmm. And here you met. Yeah, thank you so much you thank you. at the talent show thank you and we're seeing that people are tuning in from chile mexico london india wow we're just like going all over the place this is super this is oh amazing incredible this is amazing around the world in, in 40 minutes um okay we've got some interesting comments to uh lots of thank yous and oh some people are asking who are sister claire's favorite saints i think that's a sister christian question Definitely a sister question mm -hmm. Did Sister Claire have favorite saints? Well, St. Saint, saint Teresa of Lisieux was her protector saint. Um, so she had a special devotion to her. Um, she also loved St. Teresa of Avila, St. Jose Maria Escriva, the founder of Opus Dei, when she was a candidate. And then as a novice, she read a book about him um, that helped her a lot. She also loved a Jesuit missionary um, in Alaska named Segundo Llorente. Um, he's not canonized, but his, he has lots of letters that he wrote from Alaska. Um, he had a great sense of humor. Um, I think she loved also his, his, his delicacy and love for a Lord and the, and the Eucharist and lots of, it helped her a lot. I'm trying to think what more. Um, I'm seeing Mrs. Nelms' daughter, Katie, is tuning in with her fifth grade class. Oh, so oh you heard uh, Mrs. Nelms talking about her daughter and how Sister Claire helped her. There she is. She's tuning in from Guardian Catholic School here in Jacksonville with her class. Hey, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, fifth grade. <laughs> That's great. And people tuning in from Poland, too. This is getting exciting. Um, also, Sister Kristen, while we have you, one last question. So um, some people have written, uh, what would Sister Claire say to those who suffer and how did she offer up her suffering? I think that's a that's a good question, especially in our world today, where we kind of want to get rid of any kind of suffering, and we just we forget, right, that there's a Christian meaning to suffering. So, what would Sister Claire say to that? I'd say Sister Claire would say that you know we have to take up our cross and follow Christ. Um, she said she found a lot of strength in the midst of suffering um, by meditating the Passion. Uh, meditating, the pa meditating the Passion was always a source of strength for her. Moments of suffering, she especially. Um, would encourage people to watch Mel Gibson's movie about the passion. Um, 
she she encouraged people lots of times to watch that, even though it can be kind of, you know, you could say, oh, it's really, it's too much. Well, no, I mean, that what Christ really showed us his love um, by wanting to suffer so much. And so, I mean, you know, even though it can be painful to watch it, um, it can help us to realize all that he did. And then all of our sufferings are going to be seen like nothing compared to that. And so I think that's what she'd say. Great. That's very important. Thank you, sister, for making a shout out to the passion as well, because um, there's a, lots of different um, portrayals, right, going around of Jesus on the screen, and not all of them are accurate, right? And I think the passion, um, because it was filmed in a prayerful atmosphere with the, the Holy Mass being celebrated each day on the set, um, I think there is something special that the Lord uses in that in that movie to transmit his graces um, for the passion. So thank you for mentioning that too. And I think we have to wrap up. Any last comments, uh, Sister Grace, Sister Kelly? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm so grateful. I just want everyone also to remember uh, that not on April 16, 2016, Sister Claire passed away, but there were five girls with her. We'll have to have another show about that, uh, Sister Kristen. <laughs> You know, talking also about the girls that passed away in the earthquake with uh, with sister. If we can mention their names. Yes. Because I think it would be important for us to remember. Yeah. Um, Maria Gusta, Mayra, Jasmina, Catalina, and Valeria. Um, there's a documentary in Spanish on the life of Valeria, and it's in the process of being translated to English, so it's coming soon. So pray for that, hopefully by uh, her birthday, May 14th. So pray for that to happen. We will have the documentary translated in English and on YouTube. But there is a book also on her life in Spanish, also working on the translation to English. And then there's a book on Catalina um, in Spanish. And I think the English is also in the works, but you can go to the website of sisterclaire.com and go to companions and a biography and their own writings and graces and friends have written about their own memories of those girls because their lives are very beautiful are also worth um, worth listening to, worth telling and worth listening to. So we can't forget them. We also pray for them and their families, for their families. Yes, so that's very important. I don't know if there's any plans to open their causes, Sister Kristen, now that you're with Causes of Saints. Do you know anything about that? Any concrete plans? No. We have to ask our Lord what he wants. You know, Sister Claire's cause, you know, we're working on it because because we, you know, put it in prayer and seen that that's, that's what God wants. You know, he, he he's permitting her to do so much from, from heaven, at least apparently that seems that, you know, that, that it's like, well, We'll open the cause so that we can study her life and her virtues and, and see if he wants her to be you know, declared a saint. But for the other girls, we're still in the process of discernment, you know, seeing what God wants. So so we'll see. Great. Thank you so much. Thank and you so much. thank you to everyone who joined thank us. But thank you especially to Sister Kristen Gardner, um, who has, as you can imagine, with 7,000, I don't know how many pages she's putting together, a lot of work on her plate. So I, we're very grateful for her uh, joining us, taking time out of her busy schedule to join us all the way from Madrid. And if you're looking for more information, updates on the process of canonization, uh, you can check us out at um, sisterclaire.com. I think sis the sisters are putting that up right now. Our teachers are putting that up. And um, homeofthemother.com, right? Sister Claire was a servant sister of the home of the mother, but the home of the mother is much more than just the servant sisters, right? We're the servant sisters, the servant brothers and priests, and there's actually lay members and youth members of the home of the mother. So if you're interested in this amazing charism that the Lord inspired in Father Raphael, and that Sister Claire lived to the fullest and took her on a path that led to heaven. Uh, check it out. It's all on um, www.homeofthemother.com. Um, and I guess I would ask Sister Kristen if you could lead us in a, in a closing prayer um, to end our festival. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hail Amen. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray for, for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God Thank bless you. All. Thank you. You too. God, God bless. bless. Thank you. God bless. Thank you to all who joined us.